Thank you, Isaiah. President Kawe. Tapu moe vahe fonua ko la ire malo o mo la ie vai. Pea mohono tangata i fonua talu meitu ai. Pea tapu ki a tangaloa langi, tangaloa mana, hina mo Maui. Ko e ngahi kui o tua mo tau i fonua o tonga mo Hawaiki. Pea koukore ke hu fanga he talamalu o i fonuani. Kai a taa pea ngofua a e hao fangani. Ke ufakahoko a e fatongiarea o e ahoni. I begin by paying homage to the Ahupua'a land divisions of Laie Malo'o and Laie Vai, and to the Kanaka Oivi indigenous Hawaiians who have cared for this ecology since ancient times and spaces. I offer my utmost respect to Kane, Kanaloa, Hina, and Maui, the divine stewards of the ecologies of Tonga and Hawaii. I humbly ask for the protections of the Talamalu Oifonua, the safeguarding sacred stories of the Honua, land Mother Earth, so that I may be permitted to deliver my address today. Aloha kako and si oto ofa'atu, BYU Hawaii students, staff, faculty, administrators, PCC employees, and members of the Ko'olau Loa Ohana. I would like first to express my gratitude to the Faculty Advisory Council for the invitation to present the 2024 David O. McKay Lecture. I am deeply honored by this invitation. Today I extend a personal invitation to you to reflect on the cosmogony of your society and consider how it shapes your relationship with the environment. You might wonder what exactly is cosmogony? A cosmogony is the creation story of a people. It serves as a historical and cultural narr narrative that profoundly shapes a society's relationality with its ecology. It embodies a society's beliefs, values, and understandings of the world. Cosmogony's deep history, culture, and science. Through the lens of indigenous Moana Oceanian perspectives, cosmogony encompasses both the humanities and the sciences. It is a holistic perspective of the world. In this talk, I will be using the term Moana Oceania to refer to the region of Oceania. Moana is one of the indigenous terms for Oceania, particularly for Eastern Oceania. The people of, Oce of Moana Oceania possesses a rich tapestry of cosmoconical narratives about their ancestors. These tales are conveyed through various mediums, including stories, songs, chants, incantations, poems, proverbs, performances, and visual arts motifs. Within these cosmogenies, ancestors often emerge from various ecological scapes of the indigenous world, the seascapes, landscape, skyscape, and subterranean scape. These ancestors are both human and natural beings of the Fonua, the land and its people, or more broadly, the ecology. These ancestors also take diverse forms, not just as humans, but also as birds, fishes, reptiles, animals, plants, freshwaters, seawaters, coral reefs, soils, rocks, wind, rain, mountains, and even constellations. All of these are considered kin members who are deeply venerated and cared for. Upon the passing of human ancestors, some are divinized and return as vaka or vessels, such as avian or marine life, flora, fauna, and other natural elements to protect and nurture their descendants. For instance, the shark deity known as Taufatahi watches over the people of the island of Eweki in Tonga when they traverse the ocean uh, in the ocean. In a pond of mutual interdependence, the descendants of these deified ancestors protect and honor them in all their forms. This bond forms a truly reciprocal tava or temple spatial order. Some elements of nature are vaka, uh, embodiments of the ancestors, which means harming nature is tantamount to harming ancestors. In Tonga, cosmogony is referred to as talatupua or talatupuanga or fonua, meaning ancient story of origin. The term tupuanga originate from indigenous Moana Oceanian concept of tupu or kupu in Hawaiian, which means emanation or growth. Tupuanga, the source of growth, is the Tongan cognate for the Maori term tupuna 
or the Hawaiian term kupuna, which means grandparents or ancestor. In Moana Oceania, people are believed to emanate or ascend from their ancestors rather than descend. Talatupuanga forms an integral part of the expansive corpus of Talamaru e Fonua, the sacred and safeguarding story of the Fonua. This collection of stories protects and shields the Fonua, the ecology, from environmental degradation and destruction. Furthermore, they are part of the Ilotu Fonua, or indigenous knowledge, and Ilotu Fonua denotes knowledge that has been firmly established tu'u on the land, Fonua, or within the ecology, embodying long-standing and sustainable, sustainable wisdom. The concept of Fonua encompasses the intersectionality of reality, weaving together land, people, history, culture, and ecology. Fonua means land, people, placenta, and environment. Fonua is also an indigenous Astronesian philosophical concept expressing the complex relationship between society and ecology, bestowing equal importance upon people and the environment. Fonua encompass both culture and nature. There is oneness in, in culture and nature. Parallel notions are observed across other regions of Moana Oceania, such as Honua in Hawaiian, Fanua in Samoa, Fenua in Aotearoa and Tahiti, Hanua in the Cook Islands, and Vanua in Vanuatu and Fiji. BYU Hawaii is located in an ancient Hawaiian Pu Honua, in a Honua land, earth of sanctuary. Linguists have also identified cognates of Honua in languages in the Philippines, Indonesia, and even in the homeland of Austronesian culture in Taiwan. Panua is the Proto-Astronesian term for Fanua. In Tongan cosmogony, Fanua is perceived as an ancestor because humans originate tupu from Mother Earth. Under the lens of Tongan philosophical understanding, Fanua encompasses three ecological domains. One, the mother's womb or placenta. Two, Mother Earth. And three, the womb or the placenta of Mother Earth. Consequently, humans are born from the first fonua, the mother's womb, live on the second uh, fonua, which is Mother Earth, and upon death, return to the third, the womb of Mother Earth. This movement from one fonua to another is a cyclical arrangement of time and space. We are the fonua because all life springs from it. People are also referred to as fonua in Tongan. Fonua in the context of Tonga reflects a comprehensive and ecological perspective that positions humans as a vital component within the living system of the Fonua itself. It manifests in two notable natural elements of Tongan culture, the kava plant and the ta'avala waste mat. Kava and its accompanying ceremonies refer to as pukepuke Fonua, holding tightly to the Fonua, denotes oneness with land and its inhabitants traditions, and environment, while maintaining a consciousness of the past, present, and future. During a kava ceremony, kava intended for the gods is poured onto the ground to the fonua, symbolizing the fonua's return to itself and showcasing the interconnected relationship among all elements of the fonua. Another aspect of the link between kava and fonua shows up in the act of fua kava, literally receiving one's first cup of kava. The principle of Fuakava pertains to the solemn vows people made to their chiefs while drinking their first cup in a kava ceremony, promising to uphold their duties to the Fanua. The term Fuakava is now the Tongan translation for the Christian and Latter-day Saints notion of covenant. Kava was also used in a special ceremony to ask birds and fishes that had departed from their habitats to return. This was a ritual of reconciliation to restore the symmetrical relationship between humans and other species of the fonua. The act of wearing the ta'avala involves wrapping a mat around the body, symbolizing the fonua, and circling and nursing an individual. This act is not only a representation of the connected relationship between people and the fonua, but also a demonstration of profound respect for the land and its people. The ta'avala made generally from pandanus leaves sourced from the ancestral lands 
embodies a microcosm of the Fonua and its ecology. Wearing Tawala expresses unity and mutually beneficial relationship with ancestors, family members, and the environment. The cultural significance of Fonua also appears in the practice of Tawi Fonua and Hu Fonua. Tawi Fonua described the continuous practice of maintaining a harmonious and balanced relationship among people as well as between people and their ecology. Hu Fonua, on the other hand, involves entering into a deep prayers to the Atua or Tua, gods seeking blessings for the land to yield fruits and crops. Various species, including birds, sharks, and whales, were viewed by ancient Tongans as sacred, duty, sacred deities of the Fonua. For instance, there is an ancient ritual where Tongans, upon encountering a whale during their sea voyages, would present an offering of kava to the whale. In Tonga, whales are held in high esteem and reverence. The Tava philosophy of reality, which places a high value on ancestral wisdom and knowledge, clearly embodies the appreciation of past insight within its time-space conceptual and practical approach. During the late 1990s and 2000s, several scholars within the Moana Oceanian community voiced concerns regarding the prevailing use of Western philosophies, theories, and practices to interpret the cognitive, emotional, cultural, and practical aspect of life in Moana Oceania. They argued that this method was not only asymmetrical, but also imposed Western notions on Moana Oceanian practices and philosophy. Consequently, the Tava philosophy of reality, which is rooted in indigenous knowledge, was developed to promote Moana Oceanian ancestral thinking and feeling. The formulation of the Tava was a collective philosophical movement by Hufanga Heako Moilotu, Professor Dr. Augustino Mahina, a Tongan philosopher and historical anthropologist, and other scholars, including myself. Dr. Yifen Bius, Dr. Inoke Hafoka, and Ulisse Funaki, all faculty members of Brigham Young uh, University, Hawaii, are part of the Tava philosophical movement. BYU Hawaii alumnus, Dr. Benjamin Burrow, is also an active participant in the Tava movement. Dr. Burrow is currently an associate professor of emerging media at UNLV. Over time and space, Tavaism has expanded, incorporating scholars, students, artists, and practitioners from various fields as anthropology, architect, philosophy, education, indigenous studies, Pacific studies, history, arts and design, nursing, mental health, museum and heritage studies, cinema and literary studies, media studies, theology, fashion, and also information technology. Our BYU Hawaii Pacific Studies Journal under Dr. Philip MacArthur's editorship has been a pioneering platform in publishing articles and special issues focusing on Davaism. You may ask, what is Dava philosophy of reality or Davaism? It is an indigenous-based Moana Oceanian philosophy that is deeply grounded in several ontological and epistemological tenets. In my address today, I will focus on those tenets that elucidate the relationality between people and their ecology. The Dava philosophy involves a profound understanding of reality through the indigenous viewpoint of time and space. Essentially, this philosophy revolves around the concept that Da, time, Va, space, are foundational elements that delineate and constitute reality. From an ontological viewpoint, Da and Va operates as a medium where all entities exist within a single level of reality encompassing nature, mind, heart, and society. Da and Va creates a hoa, a duality, creating inseparable complementary dualities like day and night, land and sea, and human and environment. These pairs always co coexist in reality, denoting perpetual relationship within nature, mind, heart, and society. Consequently, Da, time, acts as a temporal marker for Va, space, while Va serves as a spatial composure for Da. This complementary dualism underscores the hu that humans, as temporal spatial entities, are intrinsically linked to nature, emerging from it, and viewing it as an ancestor or relative. 
Thus, all entity perpetually engage in relationship, creating harmony or conflict, symmetry or asymmetry, and they intertwine with each other. In this context, intersectionality, the connectedness and separateness within reality becomes a fundamental aspect of culture and nature. Everything in nature, mind, heart, and society intersect, anchoring reality in intersectionality. The concept is artistically, aesthetically, and functionally embodied in Tongan culture through lalava, lashing, lalanga, weaving, and kubesi, geometric motifs. You notice they're all intersecting. Such as the humufish motif, or the triggerfish known in Hawaii as humuhumu nukunukuapua. Many of the kupesi designs are nature-inspired motifs. The kupesi not only abstractly portrays intricate designs of birds, plants, and fruits, but also indicate a unity of people with their environment, embracing an intimate familiarity with the ecological surroundings. Epistemologically, the concept of ta, time, and va, space, are perceived and organized diversely across society, informed by culture and history. In essence, cultural and historical elements can be viewed as the societal organizations of time and space. In Moana Oceania, ta and va are typically configured in a manner that could be described as plural, collectivistic, holistic, intertwined, and circular spatial, uh, circular spiral. This is contrast to particular Western perspective, which may arrange them in a more singular, techno-teleological driven, individualistic, atomistic, analytic, and linear fashion. In Tonga, Ta Va, there is a manifestation of a spiral or circular arrangement aligning with the cyclical time and spher spherical space of Mother Earth, the Fonua. Noted Tongan anthropologist Epeli Haofa referred to it as, quote, circular time, end of quote, in which, and I quote, the regularity of seasons marked by the natural phenomena such as cyclical appearance of certain flowers, birds, and marine creatures, shedding of certain leaves, faces of the moon, changes in prevailing winds and weather patterns, end of quote. A notable feature of the Moana Oceanian organization of Ta and Va is their conceptualization of past, present, and future. In this Ta Va time space arrangement, the past, present, and future are tempo spatially oriented in the front, middle, back, respectively. In Tonga, Kuanga Mua refers to the past, envisioning the era in front of us. Kuanga Lorotonga denotes the present, the era in the middle and Kuanga Mui signifies the future, the era behind us. The past, having endured the test of temporal spatiality, is positioned ahead as a guide for the present, while the unknown future is situated behind, shaped by the past experiences. Ancestral knowledge and skills are also placed at the forefront to guide both the present and the future. This temporal spatial positioning explains why ancestors, elders, grandparents, parents and elder siblings assume leadership roles in many Moana Oceanian societies. Ancestors or tupuanga are revered as guardians and repositories of knowledge and skill, serving as the living libraries of indigenous historical and scientific knowledge. Some of the ancestors are deified and venerated for their profound knowledge and master's skills. Ta and Ma are arranged in a symmetrical or rhythmic manner, fostering harmony and beauty the symmetrical arrangement between individual and the environment is pivotal in the Moana Oceanian Tava configuration, reinforcing the intersectionality of natural and societal rhythm. The Tava philosophy of reality posts that Ta and Va are inseparable in reality. Tavaism argues that to deepen our understanding of natural, mental, emotional, and social cultural concepts and practices, both Ta and Va must be examined cohesively and in relation to one another. As previously mentioned, Da and Va are epistemological arranged in diverse ways across culture. Thus, cultures embody a specific social cultural arrangements of time and space. In Tonga, as well as most Oceanian cultures, arts mediate, reconcile conflicting time spaces by rhythmically tempo marking space and symmetrically spatial composing time. 
to engender malia or faka of ofa or beauty. As mentioned before, this indigenous and artistic marking of da and va and composing of va and da are visually displayed in kupesi, which are intricate and elaborate geometrical designs adorning Moana Oceanian in tattoos, carvings, fine mats, decorated bark cloths, sinet lash lashing, jewelry, garlands, etc. Acoustically, it is expressed through the rhythmic patterns that define Moana Oceanian drum beats, music, dance, movements, and poetic composition. In addition, the Tava configuration is manifested in social relation, especially within Tauhiva, the indigenous Tongan art of maintaining harmonious and beautiful social spatial relations through the performance of Fatongia or sacred duties, and in Tauhifonua, the indigenous Tongan art of sustaining symmetrical relationship with the ecology. My early research centered on Tauhifonua. I found my research on Tauhifonua to be anthropocentric, so over the years I have shifted towards Tauhifonua, which I perceive as ecologically centered. In Tonga, a distinct group of people are accorded the title of Matua Tauhifonua. They are the keepers or guardians of Tongan culture and ecology. In specific, way, in specific ways, they resemble the kaitiaki of, or guardians of Aotearoa and the kiai or protectors of Hawaii. Tauhi means to tend, care for, guard, or preserve. Thus, in the Tongan context, matua tauhi fonua refers to the elders assigned to care for, guard, conserve, or preserve the fonua. Researching Tongan cosmogony aligns with the Tava philosophy of reality and its organization of time and space, positioning the past as the guide for both the present and the future. Tongan cosmogony also articulate the profound intersection between people and their environment, along with the symmetrical relationship between humans and ecology. Now I would like to recount the Tongan creation story. This version of the Tongan cosmogony is based on oral and written accounts. In the beginning, the vast ocean, Vahanoa, and the ancestral land, Bulotu, were all that existed. From the deep sea, two ancient ancestors arose, Limu, the seaweed, and Kele, the sea mud. The forces of waves, currents, and wind united them. They drifted in the ocean for eons until they landed on the island of Bulotu. On the island of Bulotu, Limu and Kele gave birth to Toia Futuna, a unique metallic and volcanic rock. One day, this rock began to tremble like earthquakes, rumble like thunder, and eventually cracked open. From its core emerged four pairs of fraternal twins. The first pair was Piki, or Sticky, and Kele, Soil. The second pair consisted of Atungaki and Maimoa Longona, the third pair was Fonuuta, or land turtle, and Fonutai, sea turtle. The last pair introduced were Hei Moana, or sea snake, and Lupe, a pigeon. Piki and Kele, the first twin, had a son named Taufuli Fonua and a daughter named Havealolo Fonua. The second set of twins, Atungaki and Maimoa Longona, had a daughter named Velelahi. The third set of twins, Fonuuta and Fonutai, had a daughter named Velesi. Velesi is known in Hawaii as Hina and Samoa as Sina. The last set of twins, Hei Lupe and, Lu and Hei Moana, had a son named Tokilanga Fonua and a daughter named Hina Tuafuanga. Taufuri Fonua and Havea Loro Fonua, the children of the first set of twins, gave birth to goddess Havea Hikuleo. In some tradition, Hikuleo is portrayed as male, while in other stories, Hikuleo is depicted as female. Sikota, the kingfisher bird, is the vaka, the vessel, avatar of Hikuleo. Taufuli Fonua and Velelahi had a son, Tangaloa Eiki, and Taufuli Fonua and Velesi had a son, Maui Motua. Havea Hikuleo, Tangaloa Eiki, and Maui Motua are the three divine ancestors and principal deities of Tonga. Hina, Tangaloa, and Maui are common ancestors of Tongans, Hawaiians, Maoris, and many people of Moana Oceania. In the early days, all ancestors lived in Pulotu. Here in Pulotu, they gathered beneath the famous talking tree named the Akaulea 
to drink kava. They mix their kava with water from Viola, the healing water of life, overseeing the kava drinking ceremony and serving as the master of ceremonies where the talking tree Akaulea. Bulotu, the ancestral homeland, is the place where kava first appeared. The kahokaho yam and also taro or kalo in Hawaiian also originated from this ancestral land of Pulotu. Toki Langafonua and his sister Hinatu Afuanga, the children of the last set of twin, had Siamese twin daughters named Nafanua and Topukuli. Toki Langafonua migrated to Samoa and had two daughters, Tafakula, which is the red horizon, and Hei Moana Uliuli, a shark ancestor. Tafakula and Hei Moana Uliuli had a child, Lofia, and became the deity of the volcano on the island of Tofua in Hapai Tonga. Taufuli Fonua and Havelo Fonua not only birthed new lands, but they also instilled a sacred duty of stewardship in their offspring, entrusting them with the guardianship of diverse Fonua ecology. Haver Hikuleo was not, was anointed as chiefest, chiefest and caretaker of both Pulotu, the realm of the ancestral and spiritual significance, and Mama, or Earth World. Tangaloa Eki was given stewardship over the celestial langi, or sky world, and Maui Motua was designated the caretaker of Lalofonua, the underworld. Hei Moana, the sea snake, was chosen to safeguard the ocean's intricate ecosystem, while Lupe, the pigeon, was entrusted with the stewardship of inland forests. Tangaloa Eki fathered several of the Tangaloa, Tangaloa Tamapo'uli Alamafoa, Tangaloa Atulongolongo, Tangaloa Tufunga, Tangaloa Mana, Tangaloa Langi, and Tangaloa Eitumatupua. Similarly, Maui Motua fathered Maui Loa, Maui Puku, and Maui Atalanga. Maui Atalanga and Hina, in return, gave birth to Maui Kisikisi. Maui Atalanga is known as Maui Akalana or Maui Kiikii in Hawaii. Also revered as Fusifonua, the deified ancestors responsible for raising lands from the ocean step. Tongas consider themselves as ascendants of these divine stewards, thereby inheriting a profound responsibility for ecological stewardship. Tangaloa Eiki sent Tangaloa Atulongolongo as a tulione kiu, a Pacific golden blower, to search for any lands in Mama, or Earth world, since all that could be seen from Langi was the sea. However, the only thing that he found was a coral reef. After hearing Tangaloa Atulongolongo's report, Tangaloa Eiki asked Tangaloa Tufunga to throw down volcanic dust to Mama from his workshop. The volcanic dust combined with the reef, the coral reef, and formed the island of Ewa and Ata, the two first islands in Tonga. Later on, Tangaloa Atulongolongo dropped a seed of At uh, on Ata from his peak and grew into a creeper that, dis that covered the island. During his next visit, Tangaloa Atulongolongo pecked a rotten branch of the fuwe plant, causing a larva to emerge. By pecking the larva, it divided into three parts, which became the first Tongan humans, Kohai, Koao, and Momo. Maui Motua and his children brought three uh, humans' wives from ancestral homeland of Pulotu. They also sailed to the island of Manuka, or Manua in Samoa, and procured an old fish hook from Tonga Fusfonua, Tonga, the fisher of Fanua. The Maui clan used the old fish hook to haul up the other islands, including some of the islands in Fiji, Samoa, Tahiti, Hawaii, Aotearoa, and others. After Maui fished up the island of Tongatapu from the sea, he walked across Tongatapu and transformed the hills into lush and fertile Fanua. With each step, grass, flowers, breadfruit trees, and other trees emerged simultaneously. The fonua around his feet swelled into mounds, brimming with yam, sweet potatoes, taros, and a variety of other food crops. The Tongan cosmogony remains relatively obscure. Its narrative marginalized by the dual forces of Christianization and coloniality in Tonga. Coloniality, the current dominant power structures, often centers specific knowledge while marginalizing others. It was not until I was in my uh, 30s that I first heard a complete account of the Tongan creation story. I owe a debt of gratitude to Emil Wolfgram, a Tongan master storyteller, 
who shared his oral version of the Cosmoconicles tale with me 24 years ago. Despite the marginalization of the Tongan cosmogony, I am grateful to Tongan elders like Amelia Fragikuo Uiha and Taufa Pulotu, as well as early Christian missionaries such as Reverend John Thomas, Priest P. Rader, and Reverend Dr. James Egan Moulton for their foresight in documenting versions of Tonga's creative narrative. During my sabbatical leave last year, I visited archives in Tonga and Aotearoa, seeking different versions of the Tongan cosmogony. From the versions I gather, I systematically compared eight of them. Some are written in Tongan, while others are in English. Employing the indigenous Tava philosophy of reality, I decoded the ecological message they convey. The Tongan cosmogony emphasized the intersection of humans and nature, highlighting ecological responsibility through the concept and practice of Tawifonua. The practice of Tawifonua denotes sustaining the Fonua ecology through symmetrically timing va and spatially constituting da. Essentially, it means fostering a reciprocal and synchronous relationship between humans and ecological entity. Living in harmony with the Fonua is pivotal. Many indigenous people have long history of living in synchronicity with their Fonua. Tawi Fonua foster a reciprocal relationship between humans and their environment, including the land, the sea, wind, and other natural elements. These elements are considered ancestors, like Vahanoa, the vast sea, and are thus treated with reverence and veneration. In my family genealogy, Vahanoa, the vast sea, is my 42nd great-grandmother. That's around 1,000 years ago. Primordial ancestors like limu, seaweed, and kele, sea sediments, emerged from the vast sea and enacted a central role in the creation of the Tongan mother rock, Douia Futuna. This rock gave birth to fraternal twins, such as soil and turtles, sea snakes, and birds. These are all considered ancestral figures with ecological importance. Natural phenomena like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are significant in these creation story and are revered as part of the Fonua. Names of ancestors often include the term Fonua, signifying land and its people, and emphasizing the importance of ecological stewardship. Ancestors like Taufuli Fonua and Havelo Fonua are credited with creating new lands and designating guardians for various environments. Deified ancestors like Tafakula protect the land and are sought for for blessing against natural calamities. Other caretakers include Tangaloa, responsible for the sky, and Maui, guardian of the subterranean environment. These ancestors emphasize the Tongan duty towards various elements of nature, including birds, coral reefs, and even soil. Maui clan, known as the cultivators and mariners, further underscores the importance of ecological responsibility. They are credited with fishing up islands and tending to their gardens, highlighting the value of respecting and maintaining the fonua. Fishing up islands with an old fish hook is a reference to use of ancient astronomical knowledge relating to the fish hook shaped Scorpio constellation to find new fonua lands. Overall, the Tongan cosmogony serve as a foundational narrative that informs ecological duties and responsibility, deeply embedded in these concepts and practices in cultures and identity. Indigenous and scientific knowledge have moved Tongan to fulfill their ecological responsibility. This is happening in Tonga as well as in the diaspora. In the homeland of Tonga, several initiatives led by young Tongans are demonstrating ecological responsibility. Dubo College in Tongatapu is leading the projects to conserve the Toloa rainforest. In addition, the special management area in Ovaka Vavao is dedicated to protecting the marine environment around Ovaka Island, aiding in the recovery of marine life. Furthermore, the Vavao Environmental Protection Association is actively involved in protecting the Hengahenga birds or the Tonga whistler. Lastly, the No Plastiki, No Plastic campaign aims to reduce and eventually eliminate single-use plastic products in Tonga while promoting locally sustainable alternatives. In the diaspora, the enactment of ecological responsibility based on Tongan cosmogony 
is taking place within the context of trans indigeneity or the collaboration and solidarity of indigenous people and diasporic indigenous Tongan. Native American scholar Chadwick Allen first proposed the concept of trans indigeneity. Allen viewed trans indigeneity as a strategic juxtaposition of distinct indigenous culture to see what insight, cultural truth, and possibility might emerge. He argues that trans indigenous methodologies can help us to understand better the shared risk experiences and challenges of in indigenous people around the world. Filipino Pompeian scholar Vincente Diaz expanded on the concept of trans indigeneity in his work with Micronesian and indigenous Dakota people in Minnesota. Diaz views trans indigeneity as the analytical and political commitment to deep temporal specificity while reaching across spatial particularity in creative and powerful ways without losing that specificity. This trans indigenous configuration of Tava counters the denial and erasure of indigenous culture by settler colonialism and the asymmetrical power matrix of coloniality. Within the Dava philosophy of reality, trans indigeneity is the intersection of diverse indigenous communities while symmetrically mediating the culture of those indigenous community to give rise to harmony and beauty as well as liberation. I have two final examples of trans indigeneity of Tongans in the diaspora, specifically in the intersecting of indigenous cosmogenies to give rise to sustainable ecology. Example one, caring for marine ancestors. On October 27, 2017, I was swimming at Hukilau and found a massive tangled pile of fishnets that had washed ashore. I reported the incident to the authorities, but after three days with no action taken, the nets remained there. So I reached out to Native Hawaiian friends for assistance in removing them. Joshua Nanga, Nakia Naiole, Ulisa Funaki answered my plea for help. On the morning of January 5th, 2017, we gathered at Hukilau and began the arduous task of removing the enormous net. Our effort was soon bolstered by others including the 808 cleanup crew, and together we work for six hours to clear the debris. Ultimately, the state of Hawaii's Department of Land and Natural Resources intervened, bringing in an excavator to aid in the removal of the heavy nets. I remember Joss, Nakia, and Ulisa being particularly invested in this effort as a means of honoring their commitment to protect their relatives, the ocean, and its inhabitants. This perspective was rooted in both Tongan and Hawaiian cosmogony, which regards the ocean and marine life as ancestors and relatives. Example two, caring for our avian ancestors. In March, 2023, Dr. Daniel Hernandez, a fellow Tavais, invited me to deliver a talk at the Tracy Aviary Jordan River Nat Nature Center in Sungani, or Salt Lake Valley focusing on the relationship between Tongans and nature. During my talk, I discussed my ancestor Hikuleo and her, and her vaka, or avatar, the sikota, or the kingfisher bird. Following my presentation, I discovered that a spe species of kingfisher resides along the Piaakwe, or the Jordan River. A week later, Daniel guided me on a canoe journey along Piaakwe to showcase the sikota habitat in Utah. This experience illuminated the ecological responsibility of Tongans in Utah to safeguarding the Sikota, the embodiment of Hikuleo. There are now indigenous Tongan diasporic in Sungani in Salt Lake Valley who are interested in ways to protect the birds of the Jordan River. Ecological responsibility is not unique to the people of Mauna Oceania. We find similar sentiments in our Christian tradition. For Latter-day Saints, caring for the earth is a sacred responsibility. We are commanded to be good stewards. Doctrine and Covenants 104, uh, verse 13 states, and I quote, for it is expedient that I, the Lord, should make every man accountable as a steward over earthly things which I have made and prepare for my creatures, end of quote. As an apostle, our prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, instructed us to, quote, care for the earth, be wise stewards over it, and preserve it for future generation." End of quote. 
David O. McKay, the founding prophet of our university, and the person whom this lecture is named after, said that the conservation and caring of earth resource, quote, is in keeping with the example which Jesus gave his disciples, end of quote. In addition to the words of our modern prophets, the hymns of our church, such as God is love for the beauty of the earth, all creatures of our God and King, and others all express our need to value and care for God's creation and convey the beautiful blessings that we receive from nature. In All Creatures of Our God and King by St. Francis of Assisi, the fourth verse beautifully articulates our relationship to Mother Earth. Quote, Dear Mother Earth, who day by day unfoldest blessings on our way, Alleluia, Alleluia. The flowers and fruits that are in thee grow, let them his glory also show. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, praise him, Alleluia. End of quote. The verse conveys a profound reverence for, for earth, depicting it as a nurturing mother and a source of abundant blessing. It encouraged Latter-day Saints to recognize the divine within nature. This Christian view parallels various indigenous spiritual beliefs and aligns with the principle of ecological responsibility. These principles are deeply rooted in the Tongan cosmogonic ethos, emphasizing a symmetrical and harmonious relationship with the natural world. Bishop Gerald Kase in the October 2022 General Conference state, the earth, and I quote, the care of the earth and of our natural environment is a sacred responsibility entrusted to us by God, which should fill us with a deep sense of duty and humility. It is also an integral component of our disciple, end of quote. Bishop Kase explained that our earthly stewardship can be guided by three principles. One, the entire earth, including all life thereon belongs to God. Two, as stewards of God's creation, we have a duty to honor and care for them. And three, we are invited to participate in the work of creation. Similar to the gospel, indigenous Tongan spirituality upholds and advocates for environmental stewardship and responsibility, reflecting a connecting between indigenous Tongan spirituality and ecological accountability. In conclusion, I warmly invite students, staff, faculty, and community members to embark on a meaningful journey into researching and learning the cosmogenies of your own culture. Within these foundational narratives, you will uncover the unique fatongia, or sacred responsibility, bestowed upon you to nurture and protect God's creation. This is vital in the Anthropocene, the age of the anthropogenesis climate change crisis and environmental degradation. The voyage into your cosmogony is not merely academic. It is a profoundly personal and spiritual journey that symmetrically intersects and rhythmically interweaves you with the natural world. My own Tongan cosmogony is an integral part of my family history, where relatives are not only human, but also holistically encompass sea plants, sea sediments, fishes, corals, birds, animal plants, trees, and myriad other natural entities. My ecological responsibility, therefore, is a familiar one, inspiring me to safeguard them with love and reference. Let us all find such connection, and in doing so, become steadfast guardians of our precious Fonua and its diverse, beautiful inhabitants. Malo Abito, and thank you.